Dates, names, and numbers might be the first things that come to mind when you think of facts about the ancient Greeks. But these facts about the ancient Greeks are the most fun to read on the web. We'll be impressed if you know more than a few of these facts about the ancient Greeks. In this video, we'll talk about the most crazy things ancient Greeks did, from using stones as toilet papers, the invention of the computer, and more. So stay tuned until the end of the video. Let's get right into it. But before tuning in, we would love it if you'd click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and tap the notification bell for more updates and videos like this one. Almost to the point where it's almost a given that the ancient Greeks had a huge impact on Western culture as we know it. Between the 8th and 2nd century BC, the most brilliant Greek kings and colonies pioneered everything from play and literature to mathematics and astronomy. Today, Plato and Aristotle's knowledge is still taught in high schools and colleges. And we wouldn't have geometry, the Olympics, or democracy without the Greeks. Yet, yeah, there's even more to the story of the ancient Greece than meets the eye at first glance. For starters, historians disagree of the definition of ancient Greece. There's no consensus on the time frame. Although most agree that it began around the 9th century BC, when Greek writing emerged in earnest. Greeks started to live in sophisticated city-states. From there, city-states like Athens and Sparta advanced in technology, culture, and government, which endure today. Ancient Greece gave birth to the world's first computer and dramas. Meanwhile, the Greeks advanced in military and diplomacy, allowing them to export their technology and culture to the rest of the globe. Most of the northern Mediterranean was Greek by the 5th and 4th centuries BC. From the dark and bizarre to the marvelous and revered, discover the most crazy things the ancient Greeks did. Number 10 is the unibrow was a sign of beauty and intelligence. Historically, brow styles represented cultural ideals. In recent decades, beginning in the 1920s, Hollywood stars have come to determine brow design. The natural, untamed brows were desired in both Greek and Roman cultures. Unibrowed women were admired for their beauty and intellect. Women without unibrows would paint theirs to resemble such. Married women had eyebrows that were already there, but single women would use black incense to make them look better. Number 9. The term idiot originated in ancient Greece. Idios, which means on one's own or private, is the root of the word idiot. The word comes from the ancient Greek word idios. That's the same root from which words like idiomatic come. The word idiosyncrasy comes from the Greek word idiotes, which means private citizen. Besides, in ancient Athens, there was more to the word idiots than just someone who kept to themselves. An idiot was a person whose daily existence was untouched by or had little to do with public affairs and governmental activity. So an idiot was someone who didn't directly affect the city's running. Idiocy equated to privacy and independence. It was the antithesis of citizenship. It was used to describe those too uncultured or uneducated to care about or make informed decisions about public affairs. Then came the first idiots as we know them today. The term was soon used to describe stupid, clumsy, or uncomfortable. It spread to Latin by the 3rd century, soon becoming a word for stupid, illiterate people. The original political meaning lasted for a while. Still, as Greek culture and traditions eroded, this newer, more symbolic meaning took over. And via French, idiot first appeared in English about 1384. Number 8. Spartans punished the cowards by shaving part of their beards. We look at the history of beards. What's the narrative behind them? How's their perspective shifted? Allow us to take you on a time-traveling bearded adventure. You've put in a lot of time and effort to grow your beard, and you're justifying it to your great aunt during Sunday brunch. She thinks you look like a tramp and have been made disparaging cultural references to you. You're offended on behalf of all bearded people, but remain quiet. You just wanted to give it a shot. But the ancient Greeks considered the beard a sign of masculinity, as has been case in many cultures. The Spartans valued facial hair or manliness so much that they punished cowards by cutting off a portion of their beards. A smooth face was deemed effeminate. Adulterers were treated similarly by the ancient Indians. 
Ringlets were created by Mesopotamian civilizations using oils and curling tongs. So you don't have to worry about becoming overly enthusiastic the next time you buy a grooming product. Alexander the Great ordered his soldiers to shave to prevent adversaries from grabbing onto them on the battlefield. Number 7. Leprosy was grounds for divorce in Greece up until 1983. Leprosy is one of the world's oldest and most feared diseases. It's long been associated with stigma and discrimination because of the grotesque deformities it causes, the mystery surrounding its etiology and transmission, and the like of a viable treatment until recently. From antiquity to the 1830s, the prevalent paradigm was illness prevention through enforcing human behavior via legislation, cultural customs, and religious doctrine. 1415. Back then, segregation was the principal leprosy control approach. The laws of Manu, 1500 BC, described leprosy and other skin ailments. The laws forbade contact with lepers and penalized those who married into their families. Chronic, potentially against nature. Inconstitutionally effective therapy linked with sin and dread of contagion. According to the Mosaic Law, the disease was a punishment for sin, and leprosy was reserved for the most erogious of sins and crimes. A purification ritual and four sacrifices were required to re-enter society. Chinese and African tales linking leprosy to necrophilia and incest during the health protection era were a significant action framework. Unfortunately, social stigma, estrangement, and violence against leprosy patients have persisted through the ages, even into the 20th century. Feeney City's several incidents of persecution in the early 20th century. The No Leprosy Patients movement began in Japan in 1930, backed by the social opinion that leprosy is a disgusting disease and the purity of the nation should be maintained. Sheriffs and local health officials may arrest and detain anyone suspected of having the disease. China, 1937, shot and threw 80 leprosy victims into a lime pit, and Korea in 1957 beat 10 leprosy patients to death. In India, the Motor Vehicles Act of 1939 prohibited the issuance of driver's licenses to leprosy patients, and the Indian Christian, Muslim, and Hindu Marriage Acts included leprosy as a ground for divorce until recently. Number 9. Prostitutes often wore red lip paint. Its secret history can take us from ancient tombs to underground societies that laid the way for freedom of expression. As we enter a new era of female empowerment and gender fluidity, Gucci is redefining beauty standards once again with this underrated cosmetic item as a sign of strength and individuality. Ancient Greeks told most women not to wear lipstick. If you're a prostitute, you're encouraged to wear lip color so that you can be more easily found. The first law about lipstick said that prostitutes who didn't have any on when they were out in public could get in trouble. The Greeks thought that prostitutes would fool men, showing that lipstick was linked to the bedroom even a few thousand years ago. Among the ingredients in Greek lipstick were made of things like crocodile dung, sheep sweat, and red dye. Number 5. Throw an apple too is a way of showing love. People would do anything for love, right? In some ways, you might be surprised to learn that even our predecessors had a little fun when they proposed. By throwing an apple at their chosen wife, the ancient Greeks did this to show their love for them. If the woman caught the apple, she agreed to marry the man. In Greek mythology, you can find the source of this wedding custom and most of the other Greek traditions. When Thetis, the goddess of water, and Peleus, the son of Aeacus, the king of the island of Aegina, marry each other. It's the beginning of this story. Number 4 is birth control by sneezing. Serranus, an ancient Greek doctor, said that women should sneeze after having sex because the thought that sudden movement would push semen out of the body. When women hold their breath while having sex, they can make their partner sneeze. Doesn't that sound like a recipe for fun? One of the other options was to use a vaginal suppository made from cat testicles. Holding your breath and sneezing might seem like a good way to get rid of the waste, except that the Saronis method led to a lot of babies. The woman needs to hold her breath and move away when a man is about to go into labor so that the seed doesn't get too far into the uterus cavity. Serranus, an ancient Greek doctor who treated women in ancient Rome, should get up and squat down right away, 
inducing a sneeze and wiping the vagina all over. Saranus doesn't go into too much detail about how to make a woman sneeze. His suggestion was meant to get the semen out of her body. Number 3. Only men were allowed to participate, and they fought naked. In the ancient Olympics, Milo of Croton was one of the best. During 34 years, he won six times in wrestling. Ancient Olympic athletes, who were all men, ran, wrestled, and fought without clothes. It was a tradition for the ancient Greeks to do things without clothes. They walked around naked in the bedroom and at parties called Cynthia, and they worked out without clothes. Why not? Why did the Greeks do this? Of course, to honor the gods and admire and celebrate the male body. Many people who took part in the study used olive oil to look better and keep their skin smooth. There was a real effort to make athletes wear loincloths in the 6th century. It didn't go over well, and soon nudity was back in style in athletics. Number 2. Ancient Greeks invented the first computer The Antikythera mechanism was an ancient Greek mechanical device used to calculate and show astronomical events. The parts of this ancient computer are now on display in the National Archaeological Museum in Athens. It was found in 1901 near the island of Antikythera in the Mediterranean Sea. They came from the wreck of a trading ship that sank in the first half of the 1st century BCE near the island. It was made around 100 BCE, with or without 30 years. The Antikythera mechanism had the first known set of scientific dials or scales and radiographic images showed that the left parts had 30 gear wheels. No other geared mechanism of this level of complexity has been found in the ancient world, or even in medieval cathedral clocks. It was built a millennium after the ancient clocks had been made. Number 1. Ancient Greeks used stones as toilet paper Before toilet paper, what did we use? Great! We've only been using these soft rolls of toilet paper for a very short time in history. This kind of toilet paper didn't come out until the 1930s. But the ancient Greeks are probably the sassiest people when it comes to getting their butts clean. Stones, called these, were the two most common ways to wipe. Any stone would work as long as you could use it properly to get the most of it out. I'm picturing something that is more comfortable and has a lot fewer edges. In some places, people have etched their names into pieces of the pottery used to wipe. In other words, the Greeks were literally dirtying the name of their enemies. In this case, it's pure savagery to do this. It's great! Broken pieces of pottery called ostraca are called pesoi. The ancient Greeks were a long way ahead of most of the rest of the world regarding philosophy, architecture, math, and literature. How did this advanced society come to be after the Bronze Age and enjoy so much beauty? Let me know your thoughts and comment down below. But before the video ends, please don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and tap the notification bell for more updates and videos like this one.